Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. The next lecture that is lecture number 11 is based on sustainable and green chemistry approach for natural dyes. We have been talking about this subject for a while intermittently while we were talking about various extraction processes and many other processes. But let us now look at sustainability at depth. Sustainability is a complex multi dimensional concept concerning the environment, economy, human health and social impact. So, in one word we are encompassing these four aspects environment, economy, human health and social impact. It aims to meet the needs of the present generation without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their needs. According to researchers, Greater emphasis on using natural dye in the textile industry can make a valuable contribution to the environmental sustainability in the 21st century. Various sustainability issues involved in the present status of usage of natural dyes and in its further promotion are discussed here in this lecture. Although we are on we have been talking about sustainability and green chemistry approach in natural dyeing, but now we will look it into it in a little more detail. Sustainable and green chemistry approaches in natural dyeing aim to minimize the environmental impact of the dyeing process and promote the use of renewable resources. Traditional dyeing processes often involve the use of synthetic dyes which can be harmful to the environment due to their chemical composition and the waste generated during their production and application. In contrast, natural dyeing involves using dyes derived from plant, animal and mineral sources and they are considered to be relatively safer. Here are some of the sustainable and green chemistry principle applied in natural dyeing. Use of renewable sources. Natural dyeing re relies on renewable resources such as plant extracts, roots, leaves and fruits. These resources can be grown and harvested sustainably reducing the reliance on petrochemical based synthetic dyes. So, the first point itself that we are relying on renewable resources whereas, synthetic dyes were relying on petrochemicals which are slowly depleting and by 2050 it would be a very serious condition. Therefore, we, it is all the more that we should switch to renewable resources and natural dyeing are dependent on the renewable resources. The next factor is that natural dyes are biodegradable. So, the degradability factor is very high. Natural dyes are often biodegradable, meaning they can break down naturally without causing long term harm to the environment. This is in contrast to some synthetic dyes which can persist and accumulate in the environment. So, if you try to compare between synthetic dye and natural dye definitely there are many advantages and particularly because natural dyes are from the biotic material they can biodegrade very well. Waste reduction, when we are talking about sustainable dyeing processes it aims to minimize waste generation. This includes optimizing dye extraction methods 
to maximize dye yield from raw materials and finding innovative ways to utilize the byproducts or waste from the other processes. And a very nice example is that when natural dye material is used for dye extraction, whatever biotic material is remaining after the color has been extracted can be composted and can be used as fertilizer. And therefore, and the waste water of the dyeing dye bath can be used for irrigation in watering the garden plants or even the irrigation fields. So, because they do not have those harmful chemicals and therefore, there is not only waste reduction, but waste utilization. Energy efficiency, green chemistry principle promote energy efficient processes natural dyeing methods often involve less energy intensive processes compared to the production of synthetic dyes. For example, some natural dyes can be applied at low temperature reducing energy consumption. And we have seen that even during the extraction process, the dyeing can be done and both extraction and dyeing can be done at low temperature. There is a whole chapter dedicated to room temperature dyeing with natural dyes, which we will see at a later stage. More factors to consider, water conservation. Water has become a very important commodity and day by day the water the portable water is reducing and we have to be very careful because all our sea sources, all the climatic cycles are altering because of the climate change. And therefore, we have to preserve the water that we have, we have to conserve the water. Sustainable dyeing practices focuses on reducing water consumption and pollution. Some natural dyeing methods require less water for both extraction and application. And water recycling systems can be implemented to minimize the environmental impact. The non-toxic additives that are added using the green chemistry, which emphasizes the use of non-toxic chemicals in natural dyeing, mordants and other additives can be chosen and should be chosen with consideration of their environmental and health impacts, avoiding harmful substances like heavy metals. And that is the reason why copper and chromium salts have been now removed from the list of chemicals that can be used with natural dyeing. Local sourcing, local sourcing of raw material for natural dyeing reduces the carbon footprint associated with transportation of the raw material. Using local plants and resources also supports local economies and traditional knowledge. And we have discussed this point quite in detail, because if I am using temple waste from my own town or if I am using kitchen waste from my own kitchen. I am not spending any money in transportation. If I am using forest waste, then I am also giving uh, jobs to people who need and who are unskilled laborers can collect these forest waste and bring it to us. So, it is also helping in generating uh, jobs for unskilled persons. And there is a need for continuous research. Research and innovation cannot stop at any stage. As long as science persists, continuous research is needed and goes on. And new and improved natural dyeing techniques also help to enhance the sustainability of the processes. This includes exploring alternative sources of colorants improving extraction methods 
and developing eco-friendly moderns. So, the process does not end there. Research and innovation is something which is a continuous process. No researcher can say that that is it. I have done whatever I have to do, there is no scope for any further research. This is a wrong notion. There is always a scope for new research. There are always challenges that are coming up in any process in including natural dyeing and there is always scope for better and better processes. Certification and standards. Following established eco labels, certification and standards for ensuring and organic practices in dyeing can provide a framework for ensuring environmentally friendly practices. By incorporating these principles, natural dyeing processes can contribute to a more sustainable and environmentally friendly approach to textile dyeing aligning with the broader goals of green and sustainable chemistry. Today, we do not realize the importance of green chemistry or sustainable chemistry, but globally there has been a resurgence and people are looking for green chemistry and sustainable chemistry approaches for every possible chemical reaction. Green chemistry initiative in extraction. The beetroot peels have been used for by a sustainable source of beta lane that can dye the wool material through green processes based on low water and energy consumption. Green chemistry in the extraction of beta lanes from colored food waste peels from red beetroot involve the use of water as a solvent without other additives. In order for the extract obtained to be able to dye the wool, it was necessary to functionalize beta lanes or even the wool. So, three types of sustainable functionalization were performed with one with acetic acid, the other with ethanol and the third one with arginine. The functionalization of beta lanes and wool in acid environments led to the most intense red color. The color varies depending on the pH and the concentration of the beta lanes. And this is one very important example and that is why I am giving you this example. So, the availability of dye matter is also a matter of concern depending on several factors such as seasonality. The available supply of natural dyes is just 1 percent of the world's demand which is 10,000 tons. Moreover, the consumption of land to grow raw materials to extract the dye and the use of pesticides on the crop may also affect the sustainability of the final fabric. A more sustainable sourcing option both in terms of environment and economic sustainability is represented by the usage of agro-industrial waste as renewable raw material for natural dye production. So, if we do not use the agricultural land for growing natural dye plants, if we use whatever is the waste or renewable raw material from another agro-industry, then that is something very advantageous. Fan et al explored the potential of natural dyes extracted from food waste by analyzing the amount of fruits and vegetable waste and byproducts derived from agricultural losses and industrial processes in Europe and providing mapping based on the concentration of anthocyanins, quinones and carotenoids in the waste and the byproducts were examined. So, people are looking for alternative sources where they do not need to grow these plants where actually a cash crop can be grown. Using agro waste, several technological and methodological aspects describing possible routes for valorization and 
concluding that food waste streams can be considered a competitive source to obtain natural dyes, especially in terms of niche applications. Recently, studies on agro-industrial waste as a source to dye different textile substrates are multiplying, demonstrating both the environmental and the economic benefits of adopting a circular approach. Obtaining dyes from waste and byproducts would be preferable option in terms of production cost if compared to direct harvesting. Nevertheless, obtaining the same depth of color as primary agriculture dye matter with waste is still a challenge. So, there are options. We need to explore these options whether we can make use of extracting dye from the agro waste because there are ample of agro waste available and we just need to find a standardized method of extraction and that would help in circular economy. Because along with sustainability, people are also talking about circular economy, environmental friendliness, circular economy, sustainability, these are not just buzzwords, they are to be taken very seriously and applied wherever possible, so that the entire natural dyeing process can become sustainable. Renewable resources, natural dyes are obtained from natural resources mainly from different parts of the plants, which unlike petroleum resources which are getting depleted are renewable. Some of the dyes including turmeric, safflower, marigold and indigo are obtained from annual plants and thus are renewed annually. Many dyes derived from flowers and fruits and seeds of the trees such as myrobalan, tesu or flame of the forest, anato and the like also are renewed annually. Tree leaves are also sustainable and renewable sources provided these are harvested in a scientific manner and quantity and frequency of the leaves removed from each tree does not exceed its renewable potential. So, we have to harvest, we have to kind of decide which product to look at, when is the time that we can harvest, what is the best source and how and when we could take the plant out. It should not be that the tree becomes barren and then there is no new leaf coming up, because the tree also has to sustain itself on the basis of the leaves, because the photo uh, oxidation and photosynthesis takes place only through these leaves which have chlorophyll. More renewable resources, some dyes such as safflower florets, onion skin and pomegranate rin among others are an agricultural byproduct and other than the collection and transportation costs, no other investment is needed in their use as natural dye. Pomegranate rin are an agro processing byproduct. Temple waste flowers also offer an inexpensive source of natural dyes. Lac is an industrial byproduct as it is recovered from the wash waters of the shellac processing industries. So, you see there are ample of renewable resources available, we just need to tap them correctly and use them appropriately. And more importantly, because the biodegradability of natural dye is on our side. Natural dyes are biodegradable as they are derived from natural materials, they can also easily get degraded by microbial attack. The dye molecule on its own is weakly colored and is susceptible to the action of light and water. It is due to the complex formation with the mordant that deep coloration is obtained and good resistance 
to the action of light and water in terms of improved fastness to light and washing is achieved. If we do not have this mordant, then the dye is most likely to get washed off in two or three wash cycle. But because of the complexation with the mordant, the dye molecule adheres to the fabric more permanently as it would be if there was no mordant. However, in the case of synthetic dyes, the dye molecule is in itself is designed to have brilliant color and good resistance to the action of light and water. So, unlike the synthetic dyes which are well inclined with the good resistance of uh, light and water actions and they are brilliant in color, we need to take extra care for natural dyes because they require this because of their uh, you know nature of complexation with the fabric. It is the good performance of these synthetic molecules as a dye on textile that makes them difficult to degrade, thus making the treatment of the effluent containing their residual amount extremely difficult. So, in the case of synthetic dyes, because the dye effluent has these very rigid molecules which do not degrade, that is why you know it, the effluent treatment becomes very uh, difficult, whereas the effluent treatment of natural dye is very easy because it is bio biodegradable and secondly it can be used in irrigation and there is no left out by product. Easy treatability of effluent, as natural dyes are biodegradable and complex chemical auxiliaries and extreme pH conditions are not used in dyeing process of natural dyes. Effluent produced during this usage is considered to be easily treatable and expensive elaborate effluent treatment plants are not needed as what is needed for synthetic dyes. The effluent produced by using different natural dyes were found to have a BOD of 40 to 85 milligram per liter only, which was less than the limit of 100 milligram per liter prescribed by the Central Pollution Control Board CPCB, Government of India. It also had less color component and its TSS that is total solid suspended solid and total dissolved solid TDS levels were much lower than levels reported for various classes of synthetic dyes. Most part of the TDS also consisted of various plant nutrients such as potassium, calcium, sulphate and the like and hence was successfully used for irrigation of plants. So, the waste water as I told you earlier also that they can be reused in, re, in irrigation of garden plants or in farms because they do not have those harmful auxiliaries which are present in synthetic dye effluent. Higher carbon fixation, as natural dyes are mostly derived from plant parts higher uses of natural dyes would lead to the planting of more dye bearing plants material, which would lead to higher carbon fixation in the form of biomass synthesized by these plants. Generally, only a part of the plant is used for dyeing purposes and that too contains at least 5 percent of the dye. Therefore, for every kilogram of natural dye, produce some other useful products can also be obtained if purified dyes contain containing only the specific dye component are isolated. Also, if the enormous quantity of biomass produced is composted, it would help in improving the soil fertility and agricultural production and thus further increase the carbon fixation. 
So, it is a win-win situation. We are not wasting anything. Whatever biomass we are taking and extracting the dye material, after that whatever waste is remaining can be composted for better soil fertility or can be and the waste water from the natural dye can be used for irrigation purpose. As textiles are worn next to the skin, the substances present in these can get absorbed by skin and affect the health of the wearer. Skin irritation and contact dermatitis have been reported for some synthetic dyes and the use of azo dyes made from carcinogenic amines have been banned by legislation by many countries including India. Production of synthetic dyes involve the use of many toxic and hazardous chemicals and harsh conditions and adequate protection measures for the workers and proper effluent treatment and disposal systems are badly needed in the case of synthetic dyes. But in the case of natural dyes, many natural dyes on the other hand have been used as medicines in traditional medicine system. It is therefore likely that textiles dyed with these dyes may have a beneficial effect on the health of the wearer. People using naturally dyed textile have reported their positive effects on health, although detailed systematic studies on this aspect have not been conducted, but it is assumed that they are safer in nature. Natural dyes are safe. The production processes of natural dye does not use harsh chemicals and on the contrary it uses mild condition, mild solvent, sometimes only water. Therefore, there is no adverse effect on the health of the workers. Sometimes it may have a positive effect on the health in view of the therapeutic and medicinal value of the dye yielding plant material. The presence of pesticide residues in dye natural dyes from the usage of the pesticides to control the insects and pests and contents of restricted heavy metals in dyed material from the soil or from the mordenting process during dyeing are aspects that need monitoring from the human health point of view and restrict its use if not needed badly or at least keep them safe at a safer level. Another approach to sustainability. An important approach for preparation of sustainable textiles through green chemistry is the application of natural products in dyeing and finishing processes. That means several plant extracts can be used for dyeing of different textile fibers. Functional properties such as antimicrobial activity, anti odor, ultraviolet protection etc. can be obtained when dyeing textile with specific natural dyes. Because they have these inherent properties, use of safe auxiliaries derived from natural based compounds such as chitosan or beta cyclodextrin have been used for green functional finishing of textile as well. So, there are new upcoming auxiliaries such as chitosan and beta cyclodextrin which are found to be very very safe and they are all natural based compounds. They can be used as auxiliaries in natural dyeing. Environmental benefits and impacts of natural dyeing. Some of the key environmental benefits of natural dyeings include they are fully biodegradable which means that they will eventually degrade naturally when use with them has finished without releasing any nasty toxins into the soil or environment. They are made without any nasty toxins. Natural dyes are made fully from sources such as plants and insects which makes them non-toxic to those who are exposed and they do not release harmful byproducts into the environment like other dyes. They are hypoallergenic which means they are less likely to cause any allergic reaction with skin. 
which is exposed to them. This is ideal for those with sensitive skin condition such as eczema and it is meant for babies, children wear so that because their skin is tender and therefore, natural dyed fabric is most ideally suited for them. Advantages of natural dyes. If we look at this slide, we will see there are several major advantages. One is health, the other one is finance, the third one is water, non-toxic, allergies and multi-use. The use of natural dyes allows workers to avoid exposure to hard chemicals, harsh chemicals, provides a local market and sustainable income for local dyeing communities. So, it affects the, it uh, has a positive impact on the finance. It uses less water and the waste water can be recycled as it is rich in nutrient. So, there is an advantage on the water aspect. They do not release any harmful byproducts into the environment like synthetic dyes, so they are non-toxic. They are non-allergy, like less likely to cause any allergic reaction when the skin is exposed to them. Multi-use, many plants that are used for natural dyes tend to have a number of uses within the community such as food and tea. So, lower carbon footprint is also one of the benefits. Another benefit of embracing plant dyed clothing is that it helps to reduce your own carbon footprint. This is because many natural dyes tend to be made from fully renewable materials, plants or insects are good examples. Plants by, bypass the entire production process it takes to create synthetic colors and the communities that farm these materials use the plant for a range of different uses even other than just using it as a dye source. They also require a lot of less water to produce due to less rinsing being needed. The water used can also be recycled back into the next crop as the water is rich in nutrients and low in toxins. If you are likely or looking for ways to reduce carbon footprint, buying clothing that is naturally dyed can be great ethical option for you. So, what they are trying to tell or what I am trying to emphasize is that natural dyes bring in lower carbon footprint and that is also a major consideration at the current time when industrial a revolution has already taken place, but we need to still strive for many things that are happening around us, especially if it is impacting the environment or the social uh, surrounding, then we need to be more conscious about it. Sustainable methods of fa fashion production. In 2019, the fashion industry is responsible for 10 percent of annual global carbon emission and around 20 percent of wastewater worldwide comes from fabric drying and treatment. These statistics are shocking. It is critical that we address the problems caused by the use of synthetic dye if we are serious about sustainable fabric production, as well as having a significant eco benefit such as protecting the environment using plant or animal dye also helps to support local communities and local industries providing healthy jobs for local workers and offering them a safe option to gain economic stability. The textile industry as it is now would be unable to fully convert to the use of natural dye. We need to move forward towards more sustainable methods of fashion production seen in the slow fashion space in order to be able to fully embrace these production methods. So, it is a major concern even in the fashion industry that where will this go on to. 
sustainable fashion wear, consumer also need to accept that clothing that is naturally dyed may not be exactly like synthetically dyed counterpart, but this does not mean that they cannot be beautiful, vivid or bold. Using natural or organic dyes plays a large part of in the sustainable fabric production process. Any textile company which is invested in sustainable production should seriously consider switching to natural dyeing methods for the sake of both the workers and the planet. Consumer also have a role to play in the future of sustainable fashion production. If customers demonstrate an interest in clothing that is naturally dyed, brands will be more likely to invest in this fully. It is an investment, but it is worth it. So, what I am trying to tell you that sustainable fashion should now be the buzzword and their using natural dye should be of great prominence. Salient features of natural dyes, time and again we have been talking about it, but in every lecture it has a different treatise, it has a different significance. So, natural dyes are compounds, those are abundant in nature with their eco-friendly characteristic. These dyes are recyclable, biodegradable or decomposable in nature. They are easily composed in soil after end use due to their sustainability. Insignificant ecological influence. As these dyes come from natural sources, they are not harmful to the environment. That makes it so attractive for customers. Natural dyes are eco-friendly, biodegradable and disposing them does not cause any pollution. Sustainability. Natural dyes are renewable, obtained in nature and they are sustainable too. These dyes are eco-friendly and do not damage human health. They are cheap. Natural dyes are cheap, easily obtained in nature and can be dyed without any hazard. Some natural dyes are cheaper than synthetic dyes. They are renewable, natural dyes are got, they are gotten from the renewable sources they can, that can be connected without daunting harm to the environment. They are also recyclable, that means whatever is remaining after the extraction of the dye is also usable. They can give milder shades. Natural dyes are materials those provide mild shades to the textile material like fabrics, yarns, fibers. They produce shades those are soothing to the human eyes. Non-hazardous. Natural dyes are obtained from natural sources and they are non-hazardous. Do not do any harm to the body or skin. Some dyes are such as carmine are good for lipsticks, do not origin harm or health problem when consumed. Availability, natural dyes are available in nature plenty. It is possible to collect them easily when needed. These dyes are plenty in nature and can be easily obtained from the surroundings. Vibrant, natural dyes are vibrant. They are not only recyclable, but also harmless. They are much healthier in the environment and for the use of everywhere in creatures. It is not tough to remove the natural color from plants, vegetable, fruits or flowers and very deep colors can be obtained from these dyes. Some other features they have such as antimicrobial properties. Natural dyes have the characteristic of antimicrobial nature that makes them safer for children in specific. Fabrics dyeing with, dyed with natural dyeing can be used in hospital beds due to their excellent antibacterial capabilities. Non-toxic, 
Natural dyes are non-toxic, non-allergenic and non-hazardous. They do less harm to the human beings compared to synthetic dyes. This we have seen time and again, but why I am bringing this uh, again in this chapter is because natural dyes have different implications and because they have different implications, they are found to be having different focus in each of these chapter. This chapter is dedicated to sustainability and green chemistry and from that point of view, we are now talking and looking at natural dyes. They are harmless components, natural dyes do not contain much harmful chemicals or carcinogenic chemicals as the synthetic dyes and therefore, you know there are special features of natural dyes, safe production. Production of natural dyes is safe, ecologically cheap and decomposable, destroying them after use they are easily decomposable. Waste free production procedure of synthetic dyes is unhealthy, whereas natural dyes can be produced safely. These dyes do not contain any toxic chemicals or waste. So, in a way we can say they are waste free. They not only have safe production, they are waste free and you feel the nature when you are wearing a naturally dyed fabric, using natural dye is a feel like to keep in touch of nature, while synthetic dyes do not have such properties of feelings. Individuals are capable of closely connected to nature and feel the significance it plays in our life. And I will give you a small story about this, because there were some weavers who were uh, spinning the yarn and weaving the yarn which was naturally dyed and they almost felt that there was some holiness about this weaving process and in Japan they actually practice weaving as though it is a religious ceremony. So, you can feel that it has a very holy and very pious kind of uh, feeling that it generates to people who use it, who are into the production line. It creates a kind of a, uh, you know ambience which makes them very feel very good. Of course, it would this is a perception, this is not a fact that would happen to every weaver. So, UV absorption. Natural dyes are dyes, those can absorb higher amount of UV radiation in the clothes they are applied to. Some of the natural dyes are UV having the UV absorption tendency as well. So, these special features of natural dyes repeatedly I am telling because they are unique. Sun burning by using clothing dyed by natural dyes is a safer way to protect individuals from sun burning, because it has that UV absorption capability. Soft shades, the shades created by natural dyes or colorants are normally soft, comfortable and comforting to the human eye. Harmonious, natural dye stuff creates some exceptional color ideas and these shades are habitually harmonious decomposable. Natural dyes are easily composed by earth after its end use. Destroying these colors after end use also not injures the human health, because it is completely disintegrated into the soil and they are not persisting in the soil, so that it would go into the human health chain. These dyes are easily decomposed in nature. Fungus resistance, natural dyes are fungus resistant and they have good protection and against 
antibacterial germs as well. Safe auxiliaries. Now, when we talk about natural dyeing, can we also use other than chitosan and beta cyclodextrin, any other safe auxiliary for enhancing the color of natural dye? A novel approach towards the development of a chemical free and sustainable textile dyeing process with minimum environmental risks was developed. Cotton fabric was catenized with 3 chloro 2 hydroxypropyl trimethyl ammonium chloride in 4 concentration and subsequently dyed with black tea extract. Eco friendly colorant extraction from raw black tea leaves was carried out in aqueous medium avoiding the use of hazardous organic solvents. So, here they made this very special mention of not using any solvent other than water. The major coloring component in black tea extract were polyphenols like theaflavins and thearubigins. Catenized cotton, cotton fabric were dyed in four different shade depths without employing auxiliary chemicals in the dyeing process. For comparison, uncatenized cotton was dyed with the sample extract in the same shades. It was observed that the uncatenized cotton sample exhibited very low color strength that is K by S value and excellent color fastnesses. So, the uncatenized was poor in its properties whereas, the catenized one had showed good K by S value and excellent color fastness. Moving towards sustainability, however, the catenized sample showed remarkable enhancement in their color strength with an increase in the concentration of catenizing agent. Furthermore, color fastness to washing, rubbing and perspiration was excellent, but light fastness was poor. Deep shades showed K by S value as high as 8.99 were obtained for cotton catenized with 20 gram per liter and dyed with 6 percent shade of dye. Thus, the extraction of natural colorant without toxic solvents is possible, economically viable, surface modification of cotton was done with chemical free and you know you, uh, very safe cationic agent and the entire process was chemical free dyeing which rendered the dyeing process cleaner, sustainable and practicable in an industrial scale. The textile units could easily adopt this approach to regulate a pollution free dyeing process without modifying their existing infrastructure. So, no major changes were done in the infrastructure, only thing that they emphasized that they did not use any toxic solvent to extract the natural colorant, they did it in water. And then surface modification of cotton was done by using the catenizing agent which was also safe and they and the entire process was economically viable because it, they did not use any expensive chemicals. Therefore, the, such a process has become an example which others can imbibe and use it for their production without compromising on their infrastructure or making any changes in their infrastructure. So, the textile units could easily adopt this approach or a similar approach to regulate a pollution free dyeing process without modifying their existing infrastructure. Replacing metal mordants with bio mordants. In recent years, some alternative strategies have been exploited to minimize the usage of toxic chemicals in natural dyeing. Several natural mordants have been tested as eco-friendly option to replace the conventional type of metal based mordants. 
Bonnet Arasel et al. in 2016 used chitosan as biomodent to pretreat cotton, which was subsequently dyed with different tree extracts. They dyed samples and used the color and tried to analyze the color strength, total antioxidant capacity and UV protection studies. Sample dyed with green tea extract showed highest total antioxidant capacity, while highest UV protection was exhibited by both samples dyed with black and green tree e tea extract. So, people are going on doing research. Research has not ceased and people are looking for safer, sustainable, greener strategies for doing natural dyeing. Over the last decade, researchers have tried to exclude moderns from natural dyeing and there has been a great surge in the development of alternative strategies. Therefore, attempts have been made to replace metal based moderns with eco-friendly natural moderns and a lot of work has been done by Ismail and Yelly Drim in 2019. The natural dyes were successfully applied on the textile material using chitosan as biomodents in dyeing. We ourselves have also used chitosan, we have used beta cyclodextrin, we have used enzymes and we have used many other biomodents which are actually metal accumulator plants which can give the metal in just the desired quantity and we will see that in the forthcoming lectures when we will be doing more natural dyeing uh, research based uh, you know lectures. So, there are technological advances to improve the sustainability of natural dyes, fabrics undergo pretreatment processes such as treatment with moderns and biomoderns. In addition, recently new eco friendly techniques have emerged to increase the dyeability of the textiles with the application of natural dyes. These include enzyme treatment, irradiation treatment such as plasma, ultrasonic, microwave, ultraviolet, gamma radiation and nanotechnology. Many, many such technologies have come up and people are trying to bring in these kind of surface activation technologies, so that there are no usage of chemicals. These processes can modify the surface of the material at the nanometer scale without affecting its bulk properties avoiding the usage of hazardous chemicals and drastically reducing the amount of water needed. So, what do we conclude from this lecture? We conclude that it is now important to look at the natural dyeing process in a more holistic manner. That means that we should look at its sustainability part try to focus more on the green chemistry principles, see that these processes which are involved in natural dyeing process are not only sustainable, but are also environmentally friendly. Because when we try to look at all these things in a holistic manner, you must have seen that the examples that I took where moderns have been replaced. One thing is sure that some kind of activator is required to hold the fabric and the, uh, the dye. So, if the fabric and dye need to be attached, they will have to use the mordant, but mordant can not necessarily be a harmful mordant. Like alum and iron are safe, to some extent even tin is safe, but mordants made from copper and chromium are definitely not safe. 
So, they should be avoided. Now, in place of such mordants, we have tried to use biomordants and therefore, these biomordants are now safe, the enzymes are safe and the bioaccumulated plants which absorb some of these metals, but have it in small quantities are also very safe. So, those are the plants which can be used and therefore, we are now advancing towards making the natural dye process more safe and sustainable. So, with this we have come to an end of this lecture, but I would be taking one more minute to explain to you the role of biomodents and how they have replaced the metal mordants in fixation of natural dyes onto the fabric. And we have used many such examples and when we do it in depth, we will be able to explain to you in more details. But for the time being, biomodants are also from plant and they are tannins, tannic acid, tartaric acid, all the plant products can be used as biomodants. And there are bioaccumulators or hyperaccumulator plants which have some minimum amount of aluminum or copper which can act as a mordant when co-extracted with the dye. Irradiation technologies are also there. We will do in great detail that ultrasound radiation or ultraviolet radiation, gamma radiation, electron beam radiation, plasma radiations are also gaining a lot of popularity in natural dyeing and finishing processes. So, radiation technology can do a lot. Here is a picture which shows that it can do not only improve diability, it can make printing also good and there are many other things that the irradiation technology can do. So, thank you very much for your attention.